This is a portable pizza oven and today we're making Neapolitan pizzas. Now this thing is definitely not essential for everyone, or really anyone for that matter, but it's one of the most fun things I've ever bought for myself. It's one of my favorite kitchen tools I've ever bought. Anyway, let's go set it up. up we are getting a little bit ahead of ourselves because we're actually gonna make this pizza dough 24 hours in advance I personally use this really cool little app called Pete's app every time I make pizza to help me dial in the numbers it is a little on the nerdy technical side of baking so if that's not your jam I'll write out an actual recipe in the description down below and give more information on the app down below if you have any questions about what I do in here feel free to leave comments down below but let's make a little pizza dough. Alrighty, so we're gonna grab a bowl and fill it up with some warm water, warm to the specifications of your yeast. Sugar really has no place in this dough, but we're gonna add a tiny pinch to help activate that yeast, throw the yeast in, give it a little stir, and let it sit on the counter until you start to see little bubbles like this. Once that yeast is active, we can go ahead and add our flour. Type 00 flour is obviously most traditional, but bread flour is most readily available, so that's what I'm using. Then we just throw in our salt and start mixing that dough baby up. You're more than welcome to use a food product processor or a stand mixer, but when it comes to dough like this, for some reason I just love using my hands, so I'm gonna get my hands in there, get that dough to come together, and let it sit for 15 minutes. That little rest is just to help the flour hydrate fully, and then we're gonna take the dough out of the bowl, scrape it clean, and start kneading. You're just gonna take the dough, push it over itself, pull it back, rotate it if you want to, and just keep doing that for like 10 minutes until it becomes a really nice, smooth, beautiful dough. Ah, uh, stand mixer's sounding real good about now, huh? <laughs> Now that that dough's feeling real nice, we're gonna form it into a ball, give it some love taps, show the camera how nice and pretty it is, and then just grab a bowl, throw in a little bit of olive oil, mix it around with your hand, and put the dough into the bowl to proof for about two hours. Now that it's been a couple hours, we're gonna take this dough out, we're gonna release it from the sides of the bowl, put it onto the counter, and divide into four equal pieces. You know me, I'm always trying to get things as equal and perfect as possible. I like to play the game of eyeballing my best, but I check it with the scale to make sure that they're exactly equal pieces before balling them up. That process just involves flattening out the dough, folding in all of the sides, rolling into a ball, and then using this cool motion with your hands to make sure that it forms a nice taut ball. Once that ball is tight like a taiga, we're gonna set it to the side, rinse and repeat with the other ones, and grab the Pyrex casserole dish. This is just what I use, but any airtight container will do if you get a fancy proofing box, use that. To make sure they don't get stuck, throw some parchment paper in there, put the balls in, equal spaced away, throw a lid on top, and we're gonna put this in the fridge for 20 hours. We will see you tomorrow. Now we can go ahead and set up that oven, turn the flame on, leave it on high, and this is gonna take at least 30 minutes to heat up properly. There is a little thermometer on the side. My experience is that it isn't very accurate, so I have one of these awesome infrared thermometers. But while that's heating up, let's go make some pizza sauce. For your classic margarita, Neapolitan style pizza, the sauce is pretty much just San Marzano tomatoes. These are usually the cheapest and easiest for me to find. It's the Cento brand. You'll see a little certified thing to make you know that they're legit. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much just gonna blend that up with some salt and we're good to go. We're also gonna need a big old ball of fresh mozzarella. You can usually find this at any grocery store. Sometimes they're pre-sliced, which is totally fine. You're gonna slice it up or rip it up however you want and set that to the side. Now that everything's prepped and our oven's super hot, it's time to actually make this pizza. The way we've played with the time, you don't even have to let them come back up to room temp. Just throw some flour on the counter, dough onto the flour, and flour back on top. Rub it down lovingly and then let's stretch it out. We're gonna start by pushing the air to the outside to form a little crust, and the more you do this, you'll figure out how thick you like to leave that crust for your personal taste and preference. I like to leave a good little outer bit because I like a fluffy crust. Now that that outer rim is established, I'm just gonna pick it up and start moving it around, letting the weight of the pizza dough start stretching it out. And once that gets a little bit more stretched out, I'm gonna turn it onto the back of my hands and start using my knuckles in addition to the weight of the pizza dough to start stretching this out more. And just keep it moving. You don't wanna hold on to one part of this for too long because that part's gonna get more stretched out than the rest of this. And we want 
this stretched as evenly as possible for an even cook. Once it's nice and super thin, put it on the counter and we can do this kind of just like stretching on the counter, make sure everything is nice and even. And now you'll see the pros make the pizza on the counter and then move it onto the pizza peel. I personally like to just make it directly on the pizza peel because it's just easier. Then we're gonna go on with our sauce. You can use just a normal spoon or a ladle. Those will both be good. You don't wanna go too crazy with the sauce because too much moisture is bad for this thin pizza. Throw on that mozzarella in whatever kind of layout you like. Again, don't go too crazy with the mozzarella. And then once that's all good, we're going into the oven. This part's definitely gonna take some practice. You're gonna slide it off of the pizza peel into the oven. You're gonna let that cook for about 30 seconds and then you're gonna slide this little guy back underneath there to make sure it's not stuck and give it a good quarter turn. Obviously it's a lot hotter in the back, closer to the flame, so you're turning it every 15 to 20 seconds to make sure that you get a nice even cook, even browning around the outside. Otherwise one side would be kind of burnt and the other side would be undercooked. Once we've gotten the full 360, I make sure that any sides that might need a little bit more color get another five to 10 seconds and then bada boom bada bing we got a pizza the last thing that we need for the true margarita experience is to add a little fresh basil so we'll grab our basil leaves and just rip those up and scatter them around the pizza however you like throw it on the cutting board and cut it into four equal pieces and it's time to mangia la pizza buongiorno it's pizza time cheers mmm I wanna go back to Italy so bad. It's pretty close to perfect though, huh? Anyway, that'll be it for me. Let me know what kind of questions you have. If you wanna see more in-depth videos about anything that I did in this video, please give me a like, comment, share, do all the things, and I'll see you next time.